Um, we're here to thank you. We're here to celebrate our LWML Sunday, and that's uh, our Lutheran Women's Missionary League, uh, as they are always engaged in mission, and the mission that uh, really comes from the humbleness of Christ and His cross, just to share God's love with others. So that's our, our theme for today. That's our celebration of for today. Um, now, first thing you might notice on the altar is all the communion wear. Uh, we are not actually having communion today, uh, but uh, earlier this year when Grace Graybrand passed away, her son wanted to honor her memory uh, and her service here. And so we purchased some new communion wear with some money that he donated for us. Um, and if you know the Graybrand family, uh, Dale's father, uh, uh, made this for us, our altar rail, and his mother, um, uh, Grace, uh, served as the president of our altar guild. And so, uh, in memory of her, and in service for uh, our community, we purchased these three pieces, and we're going to have a dedication today for those as they as we use them in service uh, with community. And so just beautiful pieces, and then Mary and Gray, uh, made the, uh, the veil here, which is just beautiful, and I think it allows us to see just the, the wonderful gifts that God has given to us through communion as well. So uh, just a very special day in that, in that regard. And we'll be using that next week for our communion. Uh, another announcement I have, uh, our new member class for this week is canceled. I have that meeting on, uh, on Wednesday. It's the circuit forum. Uh, Nelda and I will be going to that. At the same time, over at Prince of Peace, and we'll, uh, um, I don't know what we'll be voting on, probably not, not a whole lot, I can't imagine, I haven't received any news on it, so. But uh, once a year, or once every three years, I guess, we, we gather uh, with other Lutheran Missouri City Churches in the area uh, to talk about things that we may want to present to our sonical conference next year, or two years, I guess. Um, so that's, that's this week. The following week, we will have our new member class, but we're going to change the time from 7 o'clock to 6 o'clock, and, and that way we can, um, I know a lot of people don't like to drive at night, so if you'd still like to come, uh, it, 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 it's getting later, uh, 6 o'clock is when we'll gather. And at that time, we're going to um, be studying next week the nature of God, and really what we're trying to understand is the Trinity. So if you have any questions about the Trinity, and you just want to come for this one class, uh, next, not, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, 6 o'clock, uh, here in the Fellowship Hall. This weekend I had the opportunity to, uh, and the Bowers were able to come as well, uh, to go to the President's Equip Conference in Jacksonville. It was just a wonderful opportunity to learn more about what we can be doing in ministry. And I'm excited to share some of that stuff with you today. Uh, and some of the things that they talk about are things that we're doing. Uh, like reaching out to our our social ministries that we have, such as the uh, the food pantry and uh, St. Cloud Cares. Uh, but there are other ways that we can be involved as well. And I think as, as we uh, have some time as a council to talk about some of the things that we've learned, I really hope that we'll be able to implement some of those things and really strive to reach people with the good news of Jesus and His love here in our community. Um, We have our uh, Operation Christmas Child boxes. If you go out to the Fellowship Hall, there are the shoe boxes there, the normal shoe boxes. But Candy mentioned to today that if you go over to the home, uh, did she say home team? No, Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby, that's what I thought, Hobby Lobby. If you go over to Hobby Lobby, they are giving these plastic ones away for free. So if you want to get, instead of take a shoe box, go get one of these plastic bins. That way the child can use this for a much longer period of time, and they can store some of their things in it as well. But uh, uh, what we have, in the, we just put some gifts in here for those kids, kids throughout the world who won't get them. Last year, all of our boxes went to the Philippines. And so, um, you know, it's under, just underprivileged families that don't get to celebrate otherwise. So either take a shoe box from the, uh, over there, or if you want to check out the new Hobby Lobby that just opened up, they're giving this away for free. Uh, there is a, uh, some bulletins uh, on the bulletin board. There's a list of, uh, of things that we need 
uh, to fill the shoe boxes in. So if you don't know what to put in them, you can just go out there and, and grab uh, grab a brochure off the bulletin board. All right, and now finally, finally for my announcements anyway. Busy weekend, the last weekend in October, starting with Friday the 28th, our trunk or treat. And we are sending out, the school has graciously decided, uh, graciously been able to send out over 800 different invitations to the zip code around our church. And over 60% of that is children uh, under the age of 19. So we're just really excited to invite those children to come and, and be a part of of our family for a night and to share God's love with them. Uh, so what we need to serve those 800 uh, kids, if there are those 800 families that we've sent uh, uh, invitations to, is we need some volunteers. And so here's a list of volunteers in your bulletin. First, we need uh, trunks. We need trunks for people just to sit out there and hand out some candy. If you're intimidated at the prospect of decorating your trunk, don't worry about it. If you don't feel like decorating, there's no need. Uh, the kids will be happy just to receive some candy. Uh, if you do decorate your trunk, we will have a contest best decorated trunk again, and we're going to decide on a prize or we'll hand out for that. But uh, we are excited uh, to do this. So your trunk is the first thing we need. We need people to host games. We're going to have games inside. We're going to have a bounce house. We need someone to help us kind of supervise that. We need people to clean up and to set up, uh, and we need some helpers with the craft as well. So if you can volunteer in any of those ways, please do so. If you can't come, you don't like driving at night, I do understand. Uh, we need some other things too. First we need uh, unfrosted sugar cookies. So if you can bake some sugar cookies, leave the frosting off. The kids are going to decorate those in the fellowship hall. They had a great time with that last year. We need some other decorations as well. One thing that we could really use, if you are a member of Thriving, if you invest in Thriving and you get Thriving Action Dollars and have not used them yet this year, please consider using them for this event. Uh, one person in the congregation uh, can get a $250 card to give us seat money for the event. We need things like hot dogs and hot dog buns um, and sodas and chips because we're going to sell some of that as well uh, to fundraise a little bit. Uh, but we could use that. So if you are a Thrivent member and have not used your action dollars yet, please use this. If you uh, aren't sure how to use them, you can call Les Baker, a member of our congregation. He'll talk you through it. Um, or you can call uh, Rick Anchorman. I think he's uh, most of your uh, representative. Uh, he'll help you as well. Uh, it's October 28th. Yeah. So if we're going to use those, if you're going to use that, uh, do it now. Yeah. Just, just as a... Mr. Ackerman, they actually, I don't believe, is our representative anymore. I believe it's Fritz. Fritz, okay. Yeah, and I was just talking with Fritz this last week. He said that if you're going to do the, uh, the right uh, dollars to do that, you know, as soon as you can. Yeah. Okay. It basically involves just logging on uh, to your account and doing it through that. He indicated that with everything that's been happening with the hurricanes, they definitely want to uh, get that in as quickly as possible. And if you if you decide to use your thriving dollars for this event, please let me know. That way, if other people are asking, I can let them know it's already been done. Uh, the other thing we need thriving dollars for is what's going to happen on that Sunday, the 29th. That's Reformation Sunday, 500th anniversary. It's a big uh, a big do in our city. Uh, we are celebrating 500 years of it still being all about Jesus, and we are excited about that. So we're going to have a, a Reformation celebration after church that day, after the second service at noon. Um, and we're just going to have some, uh, I don't know, German food, I guess, brats. Uh, we'll provide brats and, and condiments for that and hot dogs and things. But if you would bring a side, you know, German potato salad or coleslaw or whatever you want to bring. It doesn't have to be German related, but, uh, you know, kind of an Oktoberfest sort of celebration. It'd be a lot of fun just to gather around and say, you know what, this is still all about Jesus. We're celebrating that even as a small church. Uh, so what we could use for that as well is your Thrive-In dollars, if you have them, that $250 card that you give from Thrive-In free to you uh, to use for us that will help us pay for some of those supplies. Uh, so please consider doing that as well. Okay. And so, and all of that is listed here on that, that insert, what we need. And then finally, on October 28th, which is a Saturday that same weekend, we're having our first confirmation class. Uh, it'll be a day-long event from 9.30 to 3.30 here at church uh, for 5th grade through 8th grade. And we want to invite...
invite our senior high schoolers as well to come and, and, and to mentor in a way our, our younger students. So you're invited, we're going to have time of, of learning, we're going to have some games that we play, we're going to have free food for you guys. Uh, you guys are, are definitely invited to be along in that. Uh, so that's uh, October 28th, and that's a, um, that's a Saturday. I think I said Friday, that's a Saturday. All right, those are all of my announcements. I think John's got one. Anybody else have an announcement today? Just really quickly, uh, about the Reformation Party at the end of the month, that last Sunday, it's following second service. Uh, obviously, the second, it's a, it is a uh, communion Sunday, so when we get done, it's going to be right at lunchtime. So, yum yum. Uh, speaking of after second service, and first of all, this is October, it's Pastor Appreciation Month, and we are celebrating our pastors by having a potluck next Sunday, immediately following second service. Now. Uh, as always, there's a sign-up sheet in the back, so kind of ideas of what's being brought, and also kind of give us ideas and numbers. Obviously, if you don't sign up, you're still welcome. Please, you're very welcome to come and enjoy the festivities. So, um, but anyway, just again, that is next Sunday, immediately following second service. Thank you. Thank you. And nothing else? Then let's stand and greet each other in God's peace. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your presence. Son Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may die to your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your only name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people, making us ready to confess Jesus. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation, and defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes from 1 James, or 1 Kings 8, 54 through 61. Now as Solomon finished offering all his prayers and pleaded to the Lord, he rose from before the, the altar of the Lord, where he had knelt with his hands outstretched towards heaven. And as he stood and blessed all the assembly of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord who has give, given rest to his people Israel, according to all he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promises, which he spoke by Moses his servant. The Lord our God be with you as he has with, his, with our fathers. May he not leave us or forsake us, that he may incline our hearts to him to walk in all his ways, and keep his commandments, his statutes, and his rules, which he commanded our fathers. Let, this, let these words of mine, with which I have pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God, day and night. And may he remain, maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day he re requires that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God. There is no other. Let your heart, therefore, be wholly true to the Lord our God, walking in his structures and keeping his commandments as at this day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear to the Lord of the earth's way, but will not be moved into the heart of the Though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come, behold the words of the Lord, how he has brought desolation on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Philippians 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united, unit, united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, 
but each of you to the interest of the others. And your relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being a, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of the servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every name should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and do and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like, like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too shall be glad and rejoice with me. This is the Glory to God. Daddy. We stand. Hallelujah. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be made known. When I tell you in the, dead, in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for one penny? And not eat, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs on your head are all numbered. Fear not, you are more valuable than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will not acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Uh, you may be seated, uh, and at this time we call for our children, for the children's discussion.
he stood up and said, you guys are being fired. And he wrote it on a piece of paper, and he hammered it to the door. And that happened 500 years ago, this October. So he told them that they were being liars. And he taught us, he took the Bible, the whole Bible the truth, and he kind of put it into this little book called the Catechism. And the Catechism is where he taught us how to say, this is most certainly true. Can you guys say that? This is most oh, certainly true. true. And in our creed that we say every Sunday, we say that at the end of each piece. So I'm going to say a line, and then you guys say that. This is most certainly true. Do you want to try it? The, the uh, Catechism says, God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This, this is, is most certainly, certainly true. true. God's Word is true. This, this is most certainly true. God sent His Son to this is most certainly true. God forgives all our sins because of Jesus. This is most certainly true. God wants all people to know his love and to be his children. This is most certainly true. Good. Today I told you there were two different things we were celebrating. It is also the anniversary of the Lutheran Women's Missionary Day. And they tell people the truth about Jesus. For 75 years they've been going out and telling their neighbors and their friends the truth. God loves them, uh, and that Jesus died to save them. So we're celebrating that today, too, which is really exciting. So why don't we say a prayer, thanking God for Martin Luther and for the LWML. I'll say the prayer, and then at the very end, when I say amen, I want us all one more time to say together, this is most certainly true. Are you ready? Hold your hands, and I'll say the prayer, and then I'll say amen together. Dear Jesus, you have saved us from our sins and have taught us the truth. We give thanks to you for faithful servants like Martin Luther and the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Help us always be ready to confess Jesus' truth. Together we say, Amen. This, this is most certainly true. Good job, guys. I brought you pictures if you want to color them uh, during church or when you go home of Martin Luther. And he is putting the truth on the wall of the church, which is that Jesus died for your sins, so you do not need to pay for them. It's so great to see all these children in church today. Thank you for being here. As they make their way back to their seats, uh, we're going to continue with our sermon hymn, uh, Lord, whose love through humble service.
Our sermon today uh, continues with our, our sermon series on Philippians. We're in Philippians chapter 2. And uh, the sermon series is Life That Flows From The Cross. And last week it was Life That Flows From The Cross Is Empowered. And this week it's Life That Flows From The Cross Is Empowered For Humility. And we see that in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, there's a folk tale uh, about humility. Uh, the Tale of the Three Trees. And you might be familiar with this, but I'm going to read a little bit of it today. I have to read it because when I try to tell it, I always cry. So. Fair warning. Once upon a mountaintop, this three little trees stood and dreamed of what they wanted to be when they grew up. The first little tree looked up to the stars, twinkling like diamonds above him. I want to hold treasure, he said. I want to be covered with gold and filled with precious stones. I will be the most beautiful treasure, treasure chest in the world. The most beautiful treasure chest in the world. The second little tree looked out and over the small stream, trickling by and on its way to the ocean. I want to be a strong sailing ship, he said. I want to travel mighty waters and carry powerful kings. I will be the strongest ship in the world. The third little tree looked down below in the valley where busy men and women worked in a busy town. And I don't want to leave this mountaintop at all, she said. I want to grow so tall that when people stop to look at me, they will raise their eyes to heaven and think of God. I will be the tallest tree in the world. Well, years passed and the rains came, and the sun shone, and the little trees grew tall, and one day three woodcutters climbed the mountain. The first woodcutter looked at the first tree and said, This tree is truly beautiful. It is perfect for me. And with one swoop of his shining axe, the first tree fell. <coughs> Now I shall be made into a beautiful chest, thought the first tree. I shall hold wonderful treasure. The second woodcutter looked up to the second tree and said, This tree is strong. It is perfect for me. And with the swoop of his shining axe, it fell. Now I shall sail mighty waters, thought the second tree. I will be made into a strong ship fit for kings. And the third tree, his heart, her heart sank when she saw that the last woodcutter looked her way. She stood straight and tall and, and tried to point to heaven, but the woodcutter never even looked up. Any old tree will do for me, he said. And with a swoop of his shining arrows, the third tree fell. Well, the first tree rejoiced when the woodcutter brought him to the carpenter shop, but the busy carpenter was not thinking about treasure chests. Instead, his work-worn hands fashioned the tree into a feed box for animals. And the once beautiful tree was not covered with gold or filled with precious treasure. Instead, he was coated with sawdust and filled with hay for hungry farm animals. The second tree smiled when the woodcutter <coughs> took it to the shipyard, but no mighty sailing ships were made that day. The ships were being, uh, that were being made that day were just small fishing boats, too small and too weak to sail out into the ocean, or even a river. Instead, this boat was taken to a small lake, and every day he brought in loads of dead and smelling fish. The third tree was confused when the woodcutter cut her into strong beams and left her in a young lumber yard. What happened, the once tall tree wondered. All I ever wanted to do was stay on the mountaintop and point to God. You know, often our selfish ambition and our selfish pride can leave us wanting more, or even leave us devastated with the results of our selfish actions. 
You see these trees. One that said, I'm going to be the most beautiful tree in the world, and then they're going to turn me into a beautiful treasure chest, and I'll hold treasure, and I'm going to do that, and it's going to be wonderful. It's all about me. The other one said, I'm going to be strong, the strongest ship in the world, and I'm going to sail most oceans, and, and kings are going to ride on my back. I'm going to be powerful. It's all about me. And the third tree, I'm going to be tall, I'm going to point to heaven, and people will look at me and they'll think about God because it's all about me. And yet each one was cut and turned into just a lowly feeding trough, a lowly fishing boat, and left to rot in a lumber yard. And they're devastated by their humiliation. So here's my tale of humility. And if you were in the Bible study before, you, uh, you heard me mention it. Uh, don't be like me. Um, I don't like to brag about myself. That's partly I was raised that way. You, you don't talk about yourself. You don't brag about uh, who you are, what you do, or you know, money and things like that. So I think because of that, some people will think that I'm humble. And there was a time in my life when it was recent... Uh, last couple of years, and people were coming to me and saying, you know, you're just such a humble guy. I really enjoy talking to you. Uh, you're so humble. And uh, what that did was that fed my pride and my ego, right? I was getting that. I'm a humble guy. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and so one day, uh, I really wanted to be validated in my humility. And so, I don't know why, but I thought I would go uh, get validated from one person who would validate me so much that would just give me this great boost. So I went to my wife. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, am I a humble person? And immediately she looked me right in the eye and said, no. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was shocked. I was devastated. I was taken aback. How could she not think I was humble? We live together. I, I do all these great things for her. How could she not think I was humble? Well, I had to defend myself. <laughs> well, look at all these things that I've done. And I started listing things out. I probably even mentioned the, this uh, award I won for in, in high school basketball for good sportsmanship. You know, <laughs> something that I hung on my wall. And I said, well, what about all these things that that point to my humility and she, without blinking an eye, without hesitation, looked at me and said, if you have to list them out, then you're not humble about them. It's done. <laughs> <laughs> Argument over. She's right. I was not in any way being humble. And I was uh, humiliated in that moment. You know, in pride and in selfish ambition, we often lose sight of what true humility is. That true humility only comes from the cross of Christ. That His death and resurrection feed us to love others as He has loved us. He laid down His life without any expectations at all of being exalted, but He laid down His life so that you and I could have eternal life in His name. He was born in this world to suffer and to die the most humble way. True humility only comes from God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the true humility that, that uh, the Apostle Paul is trying to share with us in his letter to the Philippians. In the part of the letter that we led, read last week, Paul writes this uh, short, simple phrase, to live is Christ and to die is gain. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. To live is not about you. It's not about if we're thinking of the trees. It's not about being the most beautiful. It's not about being the strongest. It's not about being the tallest. It's about Christ. That Jesus would take on this life and die on that cross to have His blood washed over us and make us clean. And that Christ would suffer for us to serve us. That Christ, on the night when He was betrayed, would kneel down to all twelve people and wash their feet, even His betrayer. That's humility. And true humility comes from Christ. And so to live in this world is to live as Christ, to be humble, and to love others as, as God has loved us. Notice how Paul doesn't say, to live is Paul. To live is Josh, or put your name in there. To live is you. 
It's about what you want. It's about your desires. It's about being beautiful, tall, and strong. That's not what he says. To live is Christ. To live is about your neighbors. It's about your friends. It's about the people sitting in this room whom you can love today in some form, even just by praying for them. Paul's, think about Paul's life for a moment. Think about that for a moment. He had everything, right? He was uh, an ambitious young man. He was quickly rising to the highest ranks in his church. He could have had it all. He was even willing to stone people and kill them to get ahead in life. Here's what he's going to write in the. Here's what he writes in the epistle that we're going to look at next week. If anyone else thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day. Of the people of Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin. A Hebrew of Hebrews. As to the law of Pharisee and as to zeal, a persecutor for the church. And as to righteousness, blameless. He's perfect. He can boast in all of those things if he wants to, but he knows that all of those things are meaningless. None of those mean a thing because of what Jesus has done for him. Jesus is the only thing that's important. Jesus is the only thing that matters. Jesus is the only thing that gives to us salvation. If Paul had been a tree in the book, right, he would have been all three of them, the tallest, the strongest, the most beautiful. But he goes on to say in his letter, he counts all of that as loss. Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the thing, because of the of, of loss, because of the all surpassing word of knowing that Christ Jesus is our Lord. That knowing Christ is greater than anything that we can do on our own. And that true humility, true love, and true service only flow from Christ into our lives to empower us and to strengthen us for double service in His kingdom. It is only through Jesus that we are made great in the kingdom of God. Without Jesus, we are least. Paul reminds us of that in his letter today. Here's what he says. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this in mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Jesus who took, although he was in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But rather he emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant. Being born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form and he humbled himself by being obedient, even to the point of death, even to the point of death on a cross. And therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Through Christ's humility of laying down His life for us, He has won for us salvation and forgiveness of sins. And He demonstrates true humility through His death and resurrection on that cross, which watches over us to forgive us of our pride, to forgive us of our selfish ambition, and to empower us for humility. It is only through Jesus that we are made great for the kingdom of God. Let's think about Jesus for a moment. Think about Jesus sitting on the throne in heaven at the right hand of God. God, sitting on His throne in heaven, comes down to take on a human form, to take on the form of a baby, to have to nurse at His mother's breast, to have to be raised and scolded and told what to do as a child. To have to live and walk on this earth and, and to walk in ministry and serve people that are hurting and that, are, that need His help. To 
suffer at the hands of Pontius Pilate, to be crucified, to die and to be buried, to rise from the dead, to defeat death for us so that we could have eternal life in His name. All of these things that Jesus did to humble Himself, He did for you. And He did them for me. He did them to empower us so that we could be great in God's kingdom and have eternal life in His name. And that life, it flows from the cross. It flows from the cross to empower us for our humble service in His kingdom. The greatest form of all humility is love. And we see that in Christ Jesus. It's John chapter 15. Greater love is no one than this. And He laid down His life for His friends. That is how we know what love is. You know, one of the uh, speakers at the pastor's conference that we were at this weekend, uh, a former professor of mine, uh, Leo Sanchez, uh, he, he's a great speaker and, and a great professor. And he shared this story of his life. His life wasn't, uh, didn't start out in a good way. He was born in Panama, and they immediately began uh, political turmoil, so he was um, forced to flee as a refugee to Chile. And then they were into political turmoil, so they forced to flee back to Panama. And after some time there, uh, he's growing up in his faith. He's raised as a Catholic, but he doesn't quite understand what it means. He says he used to wear a cross. Not because it reminded him of Jesus and his love, but it was a talisman almost that would protect him from, from evil spirits. Well, uh, sometime in high school, he, he realizes he can be a foreign exchange student, and he, he comes to Iowa, where he meets his family, and they take him in, not as a stranger, but as his own family. And they love him. They love him for who he is, because Christ Jesus died for them, and they died for him too. And he and they taught him what it means to be a Lutheran. So he's so proud today. He'll stand in there and say, I am an Iowan Lutheran. <laughs> but they loved him. And they invited him into his family. He says the first time that he realized that he belonged to their family was when uh, he calls her mom. Mom handed him a toothbrush and said, it's time for you to go clean the toilet. He said, I said I'm in. I'm in. And she's, she's willing to let me do some work. <laughs> Everybody had their chore list, and he finally was given one. And they did. They loved him. They were at his seminary. They, they were at his seminary graduation. Uh, they were at his wedding. And after he was ordained and was a pastor, they invited him back to preach at some important family events. And then one day, when the grandfather, the patriarch of the family, died. You know, the mom and the matriarch were talking with one another, and they said, "Hey, should, should Leo come and preach to preach at the funeral?" And the grandma said, "No, no. You don't want your grandson to preach at the funeral, but a grandson sits with us. You see, he was one of them. He was family." And that's the way that we all are. God is our Father. Those who are looking around at you are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we always have time for our family. We always have time to love and serve our family in humility. To be there for them, to help them, to cherish them, and to love them. That's what true humility and true love means. We are empowered in this life, called into humility, to be in loving service for one another. You know, another group that embodies that well is our LW Mel. It's LW Mel Sunday. We've got our purple stole on, and we've got our purple all over the place, so that's their color. And the LW Mel, they, they do this for us every year at this church. They, they gather together once a year to serve, humbly serve, and to love uh, the men of our congregation, uh, to provide a meal for us uh, who serve so, so graciously. They take times out of their schedules. They take money out of their budget without asking for more in return. And they just put on that humble service for us. Knowing that all of us gather together to help them reach their goal of being witnesses in our community. That's humble service. That's why we're gathered to celebrate them today. To celebrate their service in Christ. You know, we are called to one another, love one another, and that's what humility in Christ is. And we do this because Christ loves not only us, but He loves you and He loves everyone. 
And He has demonstrated that love for us through His death and resurrection, which forgives us of our sins of pride and selfish ambition, and which wins for us eternal life in His name. And He teaches us how to love because He loved us. True humility comes from the cross. Without Christ and His cross, we are not capable of being humble. We are not humble and not capable of being considered great in the kingdom of God. But here's what Christ does for us. We'll finish the story. Many days and nights passed, and the three trees nearly forgot their dreams. But one night, golden starlight poured in over the first tree as, he, as a young woman placed a newborn baby in the feed box. I wish I could make a cradle for him, her husband whispered. The mother squeezed his hand and smiled as the starlight shone on the smooth and sturdy wood. The manger is beautiful, she said. And suddenly the first tree knew that he was holding the greatest treasure in the world. One evening, a tired traveler and his friends crowded into an old fishing boat, and the traveler fell asleep as the second tree quietly made his way into the lake. Soon a thundering and thrashing storm arose, and the little tree shuddered. He knew he did not have enough strength to carry so many passengers safely to the, through the wind and rain. The tired man awakened, and he stood up, stretched out his arm, and he said, Peace! And the storm stopped as quickly as it had started. And suddenly the second tree knew that he was carrying the king of heaven and earth. Now on one Friday morning, the third tree was startled when her beams were yanked from the forgotten woodpile. She flinched as she was carried through an angry, jeering crowd. She shuddered when, a man's, when soldiers nailed a man's hand into her. She felt ugly, harsh, and cruel. But on Sunday morning, when the sun rose and the earth trembled with joy beneath her, she knew that God's love had changed everything. God's love had made the first tree beautiful, the second tree strong. And every time the people thought of the third tree, they would think about God. These trees wanted to be beautiful. They wanted to be strong and they wanted to be tall. And it took humiliation, the humiliation of Jesus to make them those things. Lying in a manger, Jesus made that first tree beautiful. On a boat with his full mighty power, Jesus made that first second tree strong. And through his death on that cross, that third tree was made to remind everyone of Jesus. Through Jesus and his love, you too are empowered to be humble for greatness in the kingdom of God. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Let's stand. If you take your uh, hymnal and you open up to the very back inside cover, you've got the Nicene Creed here. And this is uh, what we believe about our humble God. That He laid down His life for us. And we confess our faith in these words. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things that is the Lord and in and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, the light of life, the very God of the very God, begotten of my being, being of one substance of the Father, by whom all things were made.
remain standing as we uh, speak together the League LWML League Pledge. Uh, their pledge is, you know, based on serving in humility in God's kingdom, and that's something we can all relate to, man or woman. So let's speak this together. Jesus Christ in the same is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God has entrusted to His people the task of teaching of all nations. We thank Him for the 75 years that He has blessed the work of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Amen. That the joyous truth of the gospel be made known in every generation. shortness of time and uncertainties of life. Preserve our faithfulness and strengthen us for service in our communities and throughout the world. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our tithes and our offerings. <coughs>
pieces we have that are, are new are our flagon, which uh, holds the wine uh, to be poured into the chalice. This is our chalice. And then this is the, I always stumble on this word, uh, so bear with me here. Uh, I always have to read it. Saborium, uh, that holds the, the hose. So beloved in the Lord, in perfect love for us, Jesus Christ our Lord became incarnate, died and rose for our sake. He bestows the benefits of His redeeming work on us as He places His body and blood into our mouths in the sacrament of His altar. It is therefore fitting and right that the vessels used to convey to us His body and blood should be sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. So with you. Let us pray. Most gracious God and Father, whose only begotten Son instituted the blessing of this sacrament of His body and blood, bless these. Uh, the ciborium, the chalice, and the flag to be blessed for use at this altar of our church. Grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ from them, from these vessels may rejoice in the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation given to them in this sacrament. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Father Almighty, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless these, the flagging, and the chalice, and the sabor, and all who receive the life-giving sacrament. Amen. They really are a beautiful set, and I just uh, thank the family of the Drebrands for uh, giving us that memorial to purchase that uh, we, absolutely wonderful. We continue now with our, our uh, prayers of the church. As we pray today, we remember those uh, who are not with us, uh, especially in our prayers, we remember the family of Jean Herb, uh, especially. Uh, Kathleen and uh, David, uh, his surviving uh, children and their families. We also remember uh, Artie Slemon. Uh, he's a winter guest who's here regularly. Uh, Carol died uh, last week, it's for last Sunday. And so we just remember him in our prayers uh, as he's traveling to uh, be at her funeral. So let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the church of God, that God our Father in heaven may look with mercy on us and grant us grace, so that his name be hallowed by us in all the world, through the pure and true teaching of his word, the fervent love of our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For humility, that the Holy Spirit would lead our lives to flow from the cross, to be empowered for humble service in God's kingdom. That love and fellowship would increase on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the extension of God's kingdom, that God would use our small church to connect people to Jesus Christ, His Son, through faith, and that the number of Christians may increase. Let, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the women of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, that they always be ready to confess in thought, word, and deed, here in our country and throughout the world, Christ's work of redemption for all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of these United States, for the president of our nation, for our governors, for our representatives, for our senators, and for all public servants, uh, both national and local, that they may be faithful in their leadership and just in their decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the vulnerable neighbors, the unborn, the widows, the orphans, the lonely, the poor, and all the needy and suffering persons, 
that our gracious Lord would meet all their needs of body and soul according to His will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, the suffering, and the grieving, and the dying, especially for those uh, who we now name Sharon, Ethel, Mary, Mary, Vic, Peggy, Joe, and Marty, for Tracy, George, Barry, and Bill, for Judy, Maggie, Renee, Dan, for Marge, for Urban, for Karen, for Ken, for Jimmy, for Randy, for Connie, for Chris, for David, for Ethel, for Norma, for Christina, for Debbie, for Jeanette, for Ann, for Brooke, for Samantha, for Donna, and for Kelly, and for all others who we now name silently within our hearts. that they would be healed, comforted, consoled, and delivered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, since you have granted us the favor to call on you with one accord, and have promised that where two or three are gathered and together in your name, you are in the midst of them. Fulfill now the prayers of your servants, granting to us uh, in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven,
Lord's humility. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.